Good morning, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome everyone here. Thank you for joining us today. We are excited to have you here. This will be a great opportunity for us to learn from each other and grow together. For those who don't know me, my name is QQ Wang, Sales Director of Pylon Tech, and I'm based in Toronto, Canada. I'm taking care of North American market for Pylon Tech. Today, I will be your moderator. Um, let's take a moment to introduce our guest today. Pat Yao, he is our technical manager, has been serving Pylon Tech global market for three years. I believe his international experience with different types of energy storage systems will bring us a lot of valuable advice today. Hello, Pat Yao. Hello, Kishu. Hello, everyone. Nice to meet you. Okay. And also we have Jeff and Ms. Greta, our techni technical manager here. They will help answer the technical questions in the chat box in real time. Hi, guys. Nice to meet you. Okay, good. Uh, Thank you, Greta. And uh, this is uh, today's agenda. Firstly, uh, myself will take about uh, eight to 10 minutes to give you an introduction of our company, let you know who is Pylon Tech and uh, what's uh, the benefit we can bring to our partners. Then Pat will talk about a uh, hybrid energy storage systems with below contents, get to know your clients and uh, how to size a hybrid system and uh, connect the system correctly. Also, he will address some common issues of residential energy storage systems. We are really excited to share what we know with you. We will also take questions throughout the webinar. So please feel free to type any questions into the chat box anytime during the webinar. Now let's start. Pylon Tech established in 2009. We started from BMS and LFP cathode material production. After two years, we transferred the material production to one of our shareholders. And he has continued doing that manufacturing and become one of the largest cathode material supplier in China. Then we moved to downstreams. We manufacturing cells, modules, racks, and container solutions. Of course, the BMS has always been one of our featured products. In 2014, we start the mass shipment of residential BSS to Europe and Australia already. And one year later, we deployed the large utility scale products for China domestic market. In 2018, we reached one gigawatt hour battery shipment globally. In 2019, energy storage is getting more and more popular. We easily to expand the capacity with another 1.5 gigawatt hour. A lot of investors starting to follow us. Then we got publicly listed on China Star Market successfully in the end of 2020. Based on IHS report, Pylon Tech ranked as number one residential BSS supplier in last year. We are honored also being honored to be selected by Morgan Stanley Capital Index on their list. They only chose the well-performed company on their bucket. This year, our focus will be keeping support, keep supporting our partners to grow their business together and localize the supports. Um, here to show our company locations. Our headquarters is based in Shanghai Pudong area. We have R&D center in the national sales, marketing and a technical support here. We also have four manufacturing base, two in Jiangsu province and one in uh, Hubei, Huangshi. And this is a new facility in Anhui, Hefei. The four facilities, Total capacity is 17 gigawatt hours. Till today, we have delivered more than 1 million systems globally, over to 80 countries. 
That means our products have been tested and approved by different environmental scenarios. Last year, we also completed the ESG audit. Adopting ESG principles means that corporate strategy focus on the three pillars of the environment, social, and the governance. This means taking measures to lower pollution, CO2 output, and reduce waste. For example, right now we have developed the package of all of our batteries without plastic to save the, uh, to, to reduce the press, uh, plastic in the, all those packages. It also means having a diverse and inclusive workforce at the entry level and all the way up to the board of directors. ESG may be costly and time consuming to undertake, but it can also be rewarding into the future for those that carry it through. Pylon Tech is one of a few companies have real fully integrated manufacturing chain. We believe this is the most advantage to the benefit of our partners and users. We have on sales, on BMS, on modules, battery systems, and container solutions. What does that mean to our partners and, and the end and users? Firstly, that means we don't have any supply issue. Even in the last two years, a lot of companies have been suffered for breaching contracts. Change price even couldn't deliver. But for Pylon Tech, we honored all those contracts we signed. Secondly, it also means commitment of safety, reliability, and stability. Because we control the quality from the raw materials all the way down to the system. We know what we put in the module shells, and we know every batch of shells, cells, are from same quality control process. The quality is traceable and controllable. It also gives us long-term business opportunities. For example, if we need to repair or replace battery modules five years later, how can we make sure the new battery modules can be compatible with the older system. Same as the off-grid system. A cottage installed a five kilowatt, 10 kilowatt hour system today. But after some years, the battery degraded, degraded and the capacity is not enough to supply the appliance. We have to add one or two modules. We need to make sure the new modules will communicate with the BMS or PCS and compatible with the older systems. For us, we can say that we don't have that issue at all because we have our own sales on BMS. And our philosophy from R&D team is any new version products will cover the older systems. I believe all those features are gonna bring a lot of benefits for the long-term business for our partners. So Pylon Tech has passed most certificates around the world, uh, such as the VDE for Germany, ULCSA for North American market, JET for Japan. Actually, we are the first company to got a JET certificate for energy storage products. This is a part of a test, a test report from ITP lab from Australia. They bought batteries from the market randomly and have done the test. Actually here you see after 2000 or 2500 cycles, Pylon Tech, the blue lines still have the best status of the health. And uh, this also from the same report during the whole five years testing report, testing period, Pylon Tech batteries didn't have any issue at all. This give us, give our partners confidence to tell the end users, we are delivering reliable, high quality energy storage systems to you. Uh, here shows, I believe I missed a page, which shows our 
uh, residential products. For residential products, we have 12 volts, 48 volts, and also high voltage solutions. For 48 volts, we have two types. One is 19 inch rack system, rack mounted batteries. And one is uh, stackable, which is uh, 48 watts. We already compatible with most kinds of uh, PCS, most brands of PCS. And uh, for high voltage, uh, for residential, we already have the UL9540 certificate with solid high voltage hybrid uh, inverters. And uh, this page to show, we also have products for CNI and the utility scale projects. We can, we can meet the system with 1000 volts, 1500 volts. We also can provide the container solutions. This is just give you the uh, products portfolio for your idea. Here to say our battery have been compatible with most tier one inverters. Here just list some, which we should be familiar in North American markets, like a Victron, SMA, Schneider, Lux, Morningstar, SAJ, Growat, Solark, Magreno, all those brands. So these pages are all about Pinon Tech Company and the products. Next, I will ask Pat to give you more introduction of the hybrid energy storage systems. Pat. Okay, thank you, QQ. I'm going to share my screen. Okay, so here we are going to talk about the hybrid energy story system. So what are the typical application scenarios of off-grid energy story system? Uh, we listed some, this below some uh, typical scenarios. The first is like cottage, you know, most cottage may lack power grid connection or power supply. The networking system can provide uh, reliable electricity for these regions, such as power supply and the energy for the farm. And also we can use the energy storage system for the boat and yacht. The space, uh, the separation system can provide electricity uh, for ships, such as the engine that drives the ship and power the electrical equipment. Also uh, in some camping and outdoor activities, we can also use, uh, for example, at the field camping location uh, without a grid connection, the out of network system can provide uh, electricity to drive lightning and electric equipment or charge your cell phones, charge your laptop, uh, etc. Um, also, for the emergency and backup power, the wave system can you know, also be used as an emergency and spare power when power outages are, or natural disasters occur. The networking system can you know, provide electricity to drive lightning, communication equipment, and medical equipment. The last is for the commercial and industrial uh, applications. Uh, the energy storage system can also be used for commercial and industrial uh, applications. For example, in remote mining or oil and gas mining venues, the uh, energy storage system can provide energy to drive uh, the big machines and equipment. And for this presentation, I would like to focus on the house, cottage, and some maybe a little bigger system with diesel generators like microgrid system. Mm -hmm. So we need to know our clients what uh, their needs and their goals. So it's uh, first is the energy demand. The customers need a reliable and efficient energy storage system that can you know, cater their to their energy demand depending on their energy needs. So and it, uh, uh, energy storage system can be uh, designed hours and release it during peak hours to meet the energy demand. And next is cost effectiveness. Customers are always looking for ways to reduce their energy costs. So energy storage system can help customers reduce their energy cost by optimizing energy storage and usage, resulting in lower energy bills. Then is system reliability. Uh, uh, customers need a reliable energy storage system that can provide 
on interrupted power supply during power outages. So energy storage system can provide a backup power and ensure system reliability, which is critical for some applications, such as hospitals and data centers. Um, for environment impact, uh, customers are increasingly concerned about the environment impact of the energy usage. Energy storage system help reduce the environment impact by storing excess energy generated from renewable sources, such as solar, wind, and releasing it during peak hours, so reducing the reliance on the fossil fuels. Besides, customers need an energy storage system that can be scaled up or down to meet their changing energy needs. So energy storage system uh, it can easily scale up or down by adding or remove energy storage technologies to meet their requirements. Last but not least, customers uh, need a reliable and efficient uh, maintenance and service support for their energy storage systems. So re uh, require regular maintenance to ensure optimal performance and long-term using. So they need access to reliable maintenance and service support. So how can we uh, like sizing a hybrid system? I think we have these uh, tips that can be uh, pay attention to. So um, signing a hybrid system for optimal overcurrent capacity, uh, cap capacity and scalability involves care, uh, careful consideration of various factors, including the type and the size of the components in the system, the expected load and the usage patterns, and the desired level of redundancy and the scalability First, determine your power requirements. Start by uh, calculating your power requirements to determine the size of your system. This will involve analyzing your current and future power uh, needs, as well as expected uh, uh, load and the usage partners. So you will need to consider both the peak and average power demands to ensure that your system can handle the load. Next, you need to choose, of course, the right equipment. So once you know your power requirements, you can start selecting the components for your hybrid system. Uh, the components you choose will depend on the specific need of your system, but typically include uh, batteries, generators, inverters, and controllers you know, to monitor in the whole system, something like that, and make sure to select a high quality components that are designed to work together and can handle the expected load. You know, they need to be, for example, the batteries need to be compatible with the inverter and the inverter can monitor in the whole system, you know, from the app, from the web. So you can monitor your system 24-7 uh, and then consider the backup time based on the PV and the grid condition to determine the energy capacity. You know, sometimes uh, the household, that some load are, you know, necessary load that cannot lost power anytime so that need to connect to the backup side uh, AC side for the inverter and some are just the normal loads you know normally just use the power from PV or from, from grid and you need and next uh, you also need to consider the scalability you know expand your system as the power requirements change over time you need to be able to scale your hybrid system to meet the new demands to ensure uh, scalability. So you need to choose components that can be easily expanded or replaced as needed. So this is very important because you don't want to uh, replace the whole system or you know, just want to cause uh, have a loss of waste to you know, like swap equipment. What you want or what the customer wants is that they can flexibly design system and expand it when they want. So you may also want to consider a modular design that allows you to add or remove components as needed. In the last, we need to test and validate when everything is installed once we've designed your hybrid system. It's important to determine this may involve the running situation, uh, simulator simulations or performing real world tests to verify the performance and the reliability of your system. Well, this is a typical uh, hybrid systems. So, for example, before we add uh, batteries in the system, the customer may have the the solar. So you can see from here, 
there is a lot of loss from the PV because you cannot use when the PV uh PV uh generate more power than the load and this power you cannot be cannot use them and when and in the night the PV has no power and you need to use the power from diesel generator for example or from the grid. So after we add the batteries, we can you know use this extra power to charge the batteries and discharge it in the night time. So in that situation, you can reduce the using for generators, or you can reduce the power using power from the grid that save your money. This is the grid tied system. So it's very typical. This is the hybrid inverter that connect to the solar, connect to the batteries. So the typical working model is that the P in the daytime, the PV generates power to supply the load first. And if you still have extra power, then it would to charge the batteries. If still have an extra power, then they sell the grid, uh, sell the power to grid. Or if in some areas, the regulations not allow you to sell, you know, like, like uh, zero exporting, then you need to, uh, the motor would uh, reduce the power from the PV PV side. And in the nighttime, of course, the battery energy storage system would discharge through the inverter and to supply the load. Um, this is a off-grid system. So it, it doesn't have any grid. So inverter would form in, form in the uh, microgrid and to supply the power for the whole system. So what is the difference between a backup system and an off-grid system? So grid tied energy storage system powers the base load with solar during the day and stores X solar energy to power through the evening and night in enabling self consumption. And the grid assists in power peak consumers or on gray days. Uh, I think the system backup power the crit critical loads for the duration of the expected downtime. An off grid, so basically an off grid system powers all loads 24 seven based on worst case scenarios, as there is no reliance on a grid. It is possible to start with the backup system and become more and more self-sufficient. So now I'm going to talk about the off-grid system since it only have little difference in load requirements with grid tire system. So now we need to design system, right? So considering the equipment, especially for the batteries, which cost a lot in the whole system, we know the batteries they have a higher percentage in the total cost, uh, you know, in the system. So what batteries we need? So actually, LISM is a new standard in larger off-grid system because of the reliability performance in high temperatures, optimal scalability, fast discharge or charging abilities. And from an investment side, a long cycle life, which translates into a lower cost per cycle compared to late acid batteries. Also, it is relatively maintenance free, which is often seen as a favorable factor in design reliable uh, solutions, especially for remote installations, uh, part particularly they are way lighter and more compact, ideal for cases with space or weight restrictions. Anything else? So from a uh, 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 from an original manufacturer for batteries, we think the batteries still need these uh, important features. The first is flexible for expanding. As I mentioned before, the customers can uh, just adjust their system capacity anytime, especially in expanding their systems. You know, at the beginning, maybe the cost, uh, the investment is a little high. So they may just consider in like one hour, two hours backup systems so they may choose uh, not that many battery capacities and when the cost of the batteries is done and they may need to add or expand the systems so for the modular design batteries you can just add in your original systems it's very easy for the installation for the wiring connecting and second is a good compatibility so our batteries you know use the standard communication protocol like IS485 can communication and already compatible with the most brands inverters in the market, the Taiwan Tower 2 inverter brands. And the third one is easily installed. So for the installers, it's very important because now, you know, 
the energy storage system market is especially for the residential or off grid, it's growing. So we need to save the time for the installing side. So we need to just uh, do the simple cables connected and the system can be can can be installed well. And the last is the overload capacity, especially this is very important for some off grid system because some loads they may have a like a, when it starts, you may have a rush current or during the using, uh, you may have like a, a peak, peak power during the using. So the batteries need to have a strong power, uh, strong power in a short time to support the whole system. So here you can see our batteries, uh, like US series modular design batteries at the stack design, stack board design batteries Palio. This is a new product we just rely, uh, released a few months ago. So here I would like to show you some parameters for these batteries, why they are they can be used for these systems. So this is the US 3000C. As you can see, it's a standard 19-inch designed batteries. You can store it in any racket, some standard racket, cabinet, anywhere you want. And each battery is 48 volts, 74 mb hour. But the capacity is 3.55 kilowatt hours. So the important features here that it can support, I mean, each battery module can support peak 9.6 kilowatts for 15 seconds. So when the load, when the system starting some load and when the peak power happened during the using, this battery have a good ability, you know, to support the whole system running without shutting down. So this is very important. And the DOD means the discharge of the uh, depth of discharge is 95%. Uh, uh, normally, the battery is suggested using as a 0.5C rate. 0.5C rate means if the battery is 74 amp hours, 0.5C means it can discharge or charge with 37 amp. Because that's what we, we suggest because during uh, under the suggestion of the battery using, you know, the batteries can have a longer life, a longer life. And the life cycle for our battery is like over 6,000 cycles and for over 15 years design. Uh, and for the batteries connection, it can support maximum 16 batteries in one stream, like a parallel connection. So still 48 volts and it's just expanding the current for the whole system. And uh, the communication protocol is the CAN and IS45. This is a US 5000. So it's the for, for the features is similar as US 3000C, but it's bigger. It's 4.8 kilowatt hour, 48 volts, 100 at the hour. And of course, it's also uh, like have support peak 9.6 kilowatt for 15 seconds each module. And the continuous charge and discharge current is 0 0.8, 0 0.8 C. That means it can support continuous uh, discharging current. Uh, in 80 ambience. And also, um, we have all the certifications because we sell these products around the world. We have the IEC, we have the URL, especially URL 9540A. So it, we also can use these batteries in the, in the US market. This is our new uh, product released several months ago. It's Palio. As you can see, the stack for design, and it's very have a smaller floor space standing. And it's have a strong high power performance. It can up to one C. So each battery model is like 51.2 volts, 100 mA hours. So one C means it can discharge in 100 mA. And it also have a, uh, amazing, you know, peak power, uh, capacity. Like each module can support 6.14 kilowatts in 50 minutes and 10 kilowatts in 15 seconds. So strong power battery helps to manage the total installation capacity freely. This is the Palio Spacey. The DOD is 95%, the cycle life, so over 6,000 cycles. And we have all the certifications that need to make sure that it can be used in any regions or countries in the world. And it, and it also have IP rating IP65. That means you can install it, you know, outside the house. And so in the U.S. market, our batteries like U.S. series batteries, our Palio, 
this low voltage, I mean, 48 volts or 51.2 volts, we, we call it the low voltage uh, hybrid system batteries from the DC side. And it can compatible with the solar arc inverters. Uh, here, I just give you a table that recommend the minimum battery models for different range uh, power capacity of the solar arc batteries. For example, if we are using five kilowatts inverters, we can configure different quantities of the battery modules because we need to consider the uh, suggest continuous discharge current for each battery module. So if you configure less battery modules, then the, the whole system current would be bigger than the uh, battery uh, itself capacity uh, ability because each battery module have a BMS inside. So it would can it it would reduce its discharge power uh, discharge current when uh, the the higher power needed. So that's why we have to recommend a minimum battery modules considering the each battery module uh C rating discharging. So for US three thousand is zero point zero point five C rate like 30, 37 ambience. For US five thousand it support zero point eight C. Uh, discharging is 80 ampers, and also for the paleo, it's 80 ampers too. So, according to this, we can uh, design the system with minimum battery modules. But of course, if, if you want, you can add more batteries according to according to the specific situation. Here, I also have a list for the US 5000 configuration. So, different uh, quantities. For the modules, and you would also, of course, have different nominal capacity, usable capacity. So usable capacity means you use the nominal capacity times the DOD, like 95%, and you would get the usable capacity. And the rated power means it's discharge current ability. The rated power for one module is 3.84, and the max power is 60, in 60 seconds, 4.8, and in 15 seconds, 5.74. So when you design the system, you need to consider, for example, like the average load for the system and the peak load for the system and the backup hours for the system you need. Then you can choose like the inverter power capacity and the battery banks capacity according to these uh, conditions. This is the performance of our batteries. So. You know that cycle life, uh, it depends on the different DOD, the discharge of depth and the different C rate. So you can uh, follow this chart to like uh, uh, have a predict for their cycle life. For example, if we are using the batteries in 0 0.2 C rate, so this means this uh, proper line. And if we are using the batteries with DOD like 90, like 80, like 80%, DOD, so it would have a cycle lives. I think around 7,000 cycles over, of course, over 10 years. So this is just an example. So it depends on your systems using, you can also I follow this chart to know the uh, around the cycle life for the system, uh, for the batteries. And also the temperature would also have a influence on the cycle lives for the batteries. So from this picture, you can see like 25% uh, 25 uh, degrees is a perfect uh, temperature range for the batteries using. So in this temperature, the cycle life gonna be like 6,000 cycles. So that's why we uh, may suggest the customer to install the batteries, not in a very high uh, temperature or in a very low temperature that because they're gonna be have an influence for the battery's lives. So, uh, we suggest them install the batteries indoor, you know, or with the air conditioner to control the ambient temperature. So in that way, you can have a longer life for battery batteries. So here comes with our batteries installation. As we mentioned before, that our battery modules is a 19-inch, you know, standard design. So we can put them in the cabinet like this or in an outdoor cabinet like this. For this cabinet, you can install like four batteries in a cabinet. And for this outdoor version, you can install like six pieces of batteries modules uh, per cabinet. So, but also this, we provide this cabinet for the customers 
if they need, but if you can have find the local, you know, find the enclosure yourselves, it's okay. You can just put your batteries in your own enclosure, your own cabinet, because it's a, with a, a 19 inch standard design size. So this is another installation way, like the, we call it the bracket installation. So we can install the batteries like this, or we can also support the vertical installation, you know, maybe sometimes in, to save your floor space in a, in a, in a small area. And this is a like sequence to install the bracket. So you need to install the two piece of bracket for the one module, then put it on the ground and use four loca location holes, stack the batteries together and connect the four locker together. And maximum in one stack, you can support like three piece US 5000 uh, battery modules for US uh, 3000C. You can like install four piece in one stack considering the weight of the battery modules. Here, uh, just mention about the current for the system. If we are using like uh, the power capacity inverter like below five kilowatts, then we can easily get the system current. I mean, the system DC side current is below 100 amps. So we can just use one pair of power cables connect from the batteries to the inverter side because the power cables we supplied uh, is four AWG cable. It can support the continue constant 100 amp current. So if the power is, if the power is over five kilowatts and below 10 kilowatts, then the current uh, is around 200 amps. That means we need to use two pair of power cables from the battery side to the inverter. So it de depends on your system's siding. You can easily calculate the DC side the total current and uh, use the appropriate or great quantities of the power cables. And, and, and our modular design batteries also, you know, uh, can expand it easily according to the system requirements because uh, for each group, we can support 16 batteries in one group. And with the LV hub, this is a communication box. With this box, we can support six groups in parallel connection, of course. And that means um, one piece LV hub can connect maximum 96 battery modules. That's 460 kilowatt hours, it's very huge. Not only that, and if we are using like must LV hub and a slave, L, slave LV hubs, like level two, level one, each LV hub connect 96 batteries and we can have five LV hubs. So that means the whole system can configure a maximum 408 piece batteries. That's over 2.3 megawatt hours. So it's totally enough for every kind of using. Here, I just show you a, a typical uh, wiring cables connection um, with the Victron system. So you can see there are two stacks batteries here, right? So the internal communication cables are connected together. So they are still the one group batteries. And from communication, this is the first battery, we call it the master battery. It communicates with slave batteries and collect the data. And then this master battery would connect to the this GX control device from the Victron uh, with the CAN communication. And the power cables, we have two uh, groups batteries. So it have two pair of power cables connect to this DC distribution. And then, uh, the MPPT connect to the PV panels and also will connect to DC distribution box. And then they will con connect to the inverter. And for this uh, GX device, it would also communicate with the batteries, with the MPPT, and also with the inverter side. And for the inverter AC output, it would have a load for uh, the normal load or for the no break loads. So like that means the backup. So this is the typical wiring uh, connection for our batteries using with the Victron in some, in most uh, of like off-grid systems. And in some uh, 
existing PV PV systems. That means the customer uh uh install the PV PV inverters at the beginning, and they want to add the energy storage systems in the original systems. So there are two ways that we are normally see. One is use the AC batteries. Another you use the hybrid inverter plus batteries. So what the AC batteries means like they just put uh, the inverter and the batteries in in this in this box together. So um, some customers they also give feedback to us that you know uh, it's 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 easily to install for sure, but if they want to expand the systems, for example, uh, the orange system is five five kilowatts, fourteen kilowatt hour, and he wants just to expand the battery capacity, then he can only to add a total system. So it means it he needs to add another five kilowatts, fourteen kilowatt hour. So it's like a kind of waste. But for hybrid batteries, you can just install the battery. You can just add the batteries that you need. So I think this is the advantage for the hybrid system and uh, the DC, or we say this DC batteries and AC batteries difference. So it's more flexible for the DC batteries. You can just reduce or add the batteries that you need, uh, considering your uh, backup power hours, uh, uh, all for the like batteries degradation for its cycle life, and you need to add more batteries to supply your your load. Uh, another thing that for this kind of systems, uh, most time, mo mostly, these AC batteries, the AC inverter cannot communicate with this PV inverter. So this is the AC couple system, right? And this inverter inside cannot communicate with the inverter. That means if the PV side generates more power, for example, more power than the load needs, so extra extra power, we know it would charge the batteries. But if the charger is if the battery is already full, then uh, normally the inverter would just like change its frequency and to shut down the PV inverter totally, and then it would discharge the batteries to supply the load here. There would be a problem. For example, if it's near night time. Uh, the system works like this, you know, discharge the batteries to supply the load, but in the nighttime, the battery's capacity is not enough for the load that needs. So this is the problem. But for the hybrid system, the hybrid inverter can just, you know, adjust the output considering the node need. That means it can always make sure that the battery banks are in a full capacity. So in nighttime, you can just use the batteries to discharge, discharge the battery to supply the enough power for the for the load you need. This is another uh, advantage for DC batteries, we think. And also for the maintenance of after sale service, if one this kind of box have failure for customer or even installers, they are not allowed to open it, to fix it, to find out issues. And then as I know, no. You can only like replace the whole system and find another new new cabinet to install it here. But that means in some time, you know, because you you, you need some time to replace it. So your your system uh, would lost power for a few days. And for the hybrid systems, of course, it's modular design, you know, batteries, inverters. You can easily find which part have a problem. For the battery side, it's more easily because it's modular, modular different modules have, have many modules. So if just one battery module got issue, then you can just repair this module and the whole system can still working. So that's the advantage, another advantage for the DC batteries. So here we are. Uh, just listed these things to uh, like give a suggestion for, for, the, for the installers when design the system. And this is uh, for the common issues that may arise in off-grid system. The first is the equipment incapability or wrong settings. So I think most of these around is about the batteries capacity with uh, inverters because they need to communicate with each other. The batteries need to tear the inverters 
when to charge and charge in uh in in how in how big current something like that. So in that in that with the communication, the batteries can work in a long term using with a long uh like cycle life. So another is uh, for our batteries uh. As we mentioned before, we already uh, communicated or compatible with the most balanced inverters in in the market. So that's gonna be not not a problem for us if you choose our patented batteries. And second is for the power cable connection. If you have wrong or poor, like loose connections, it may lead to voltage drop, energy loss, or critical damage to the system because the the terminal, the connection side may have a a, a high temperature in a very short time it may cause a serious results. So you need to read uh, manual or gate training before installation and ensure that the power cable connections are properly installed, secured and maintained. So conducting a regular inspections and testing using a high quality components. Or uh, three, of course, the most important is safety concerns. Um, to address safety concerns is essential to follow safety protocols and ensure that the system is designed and installed to with local safety set standards and the regulations. It's also important to train the personal or proper handling and maintenance of the system. For the environment side, such as temperature, humidity, and exposure to sunlight can impact performance and lifespan of the storage components. So even for some inverters or for some batteries like our Palio, we have like IP65, uh, you know, IP ratings, Actually, you can install it outdoor, but we still suggest like install it in you know, with a shield. You know, just prevent it from a direct, uh, you know, direct uh, uh, exposed to like sun sunshine, like the rain, like. Snowy, so in that you can make. make Also for the batteries, unbalanced, you know, batteries can experience unbalance due to use like temperature and other fact, uh, factors, which can lead to reduce uh, the capacity and the performance. So to, to solve this issue, it's important to monitor the battery performance and regularly full charge the batteries system like monthly or, you know, like two every three months every two months and to full charge the batteries to make the batteries can like balance inside the cells or between the battery modules. And in that way you can like, the whole system can still have a very high capacity that are usable. And also the last is like financial changes. You can work with third party financial provider like loan or leasing or PPA. So by addressing these issues and implementing appropriate solutions, hybrid energy storage system can provide reliable efficiency and safety energy storage solutions for different applications. So that's why you need to choose a reliable equipment supplier like Pyantech. We have already provided the batteries for the energy storage systems. And we only focus on energy storage systems uh, for over 10 years. So here you can see like we have provided like 1 million residential energy storage systems delivered globally since uh, 2013. Uh, this is uh, some uh, case studies you can see from the Victron, from the like, SMA, so different inverters. And oh, this is a off-grid system, it's 168 kilowatt hours with the Victron systems. And this is like Victron plus Bronius. It's more like uh, AC couple systems, Bronius is a, it's a, total, a pure PV inverters and they added the energy storage systems in 2021. So I think that's the last, okay, that's the last slide. So thank you for attention. I hope you have found these sessions useful and we are happy to answer any questions. So now if you have any questions, feel free to ask and you can also like type in, in the chat box. I think uh, uh, some of you already talked with our engineer, Jeff and Greater. So feel free to ask us. Thank you. Thank you, Pat. And uh, yeah, we, we still have time. We have still have 10 minutes. If anyone has any questions, just feel free. You can raise your hand and do unmute or put 
the questions in the in, in the chat box. Uh, we are is asking, can you comment on the high voltage version? Uh, maybe Pat, do you want to talk about the high voltage? So you mean, uh, actually for some big systems, like we talk about the commercial and industrial or even like utility scale projects. Yes, we choose the high voltage systems because, you know, considering the current, considering oh, the efficiency. I asking high, vo high voltage residential. Yeah, right. high voltage residential. Uh, yeah, we also do have the high voltage products for the residential parts. Of course, uh, in a high voltage like, but normally like for a big, a little bigger systems like the over twenty kilowatts systems or thirty like like solar they have the thirty kilowatts capacity or sixty kilowatts. So in that. Uh, condition we may suggest to use like high voltage systems because you need to consider the confluence, the DC confluence for the DC current. Uh, if the power capacity is too big, then you gotta have a very huge DC bus bar or a very big DC combined box for the for the DC side. That's why we recommend the high voltage uh, systems in that condition. And also you can have also have a like a, a quick uh, discharge or charge uh ability yeah okay uh thank you pat and uh georgia is asking how do you handle service requests if uh, in different uh, countries do you have authorized service centers uh yes actually in in some countries we do have authorized distributors and authorized service partners and then right now, like in North America, we are building our own uh, subsidiary company there. We will have local people to provide the service. Uh, I find another question. You didn't mean, mention your US 2000C. Are you putting out the production? No, we will still uh, sell US 2000C. Uh, I, for here, I just show our like new uh, product like US 3000C, US 5000, but it's some typical uh, uh, scenarios you can also use US 2000C 2.4 kilowatt hours. Uh, it's flexible. For example, our US, our US 2000C, our US 3000C, even our US 5000, they can also be used together. You know, just to design your system in a very flexible way. So you can use like two piece US 1000 and one piece, a uh, two piece US 1000C and one piece US US 3000C plus one US 5000. That's also okay. Just depends on your requirements. They are just only have the difference for, for us. They are just have difference in capacity, but they can use it with each other. Mm -hmm. And uh, we always asking a good question. What are the technical reasons that you can't just wire up the LV modules in series to get HV? High voltage. What are the No, no, they are different because for the LV batteries, they have got different, uh, you know, like range for the for voltage range in hardware components inside the battery modules. So for us, LV, so low voltage batteries can only be used in parallel connection for the low voltage system. And we also have a high voltage system, high voltage batteries for the high voltage system. They're just in two different way. Uh, well, I hope that his answer is clear to you. And uh, Pierre is asking if there are a partner program. Uh, yes, we are working on that. Like uh, we have different type of partners. We have distributors as partners. We also have service partners. We also have installer as partners, different programs. So if you have interest, Pierre, you can send us email uh, to talk about them more. Giorgio is asking, how do you handle compatibility list for different inverters and a firmware release? Um, for, Last one. So actually, uh, yeah, this is also a good question. So for us, we uh, have a very stable, we like process for the releasing firmware, but with the 
inverters cause even the inverter they upgrade the firmware but the communication the most time the communication protocol is still the same that's why we can compatible with so many brands so many models inverters in the market so they would not change their communication protocol easily so with that we can still like use our new models if we just use the same protocol in future so still compatible with these inverters Will is asking another question. Can you comment on growth of a battery bank over time? Like if we have a hundred kilowatt hour bank for a few years, more is the daily cycling in an off-grid environment, and we need to grow the site to 200 kilowatt hours two or three years later. Yeah, that's that's possible. So, you know, especially for this kind of was CNI, we call this maybe like CNI, like light commercial or industrial uh, projects. Sometimes the customer may like to choose like a little small capacity at the beginning, you know, considering the investment. So we can use like install the 100 kilowatt hour batteries. That's like around one uh, battery rank. So in the future, if the customer need to add batteries, that's also okay. We can just need to add another rack batteries in the system. From technical side, it's totally work. Yeah, that's also because uh, we are fully integrated manufacturer. We have our own sales and a BMS. As I mentioned before, our philosophy for any new products, maybe a few years later, we have new version of the battery modules, but it always cover the older version. So they do compatible. You don't need to worry about that. Just add a, one more rack. Can you talk, uh, Taylor, have a question that can you talk? Can you talk about the high voltage power that would be necessary for the HV battery products? How many battery modules can HV hub manage, which is in a communicate hub or electric plant networks or both? So a little different for the high voltage systems, we got like for each battery rack or each battery string, it was consist of one BMS and several battery modules, like 20 battery modules, and we can have several of these battery racks in parallel connection and on the top of them there is a communication device we call the MB mbms that master bms so these uh several bms would communicate to that master bms like mbms so the mbms would can support like maximum 32 groups or battery streams in the system And a peer, peer is asking, this is maybe more of an inverter question, but it's a high voltage to 230 volts more efficient than low voltage to 230 volts efficient. What does that mean, Pat? Uh, but it's high HV to, yeah, from actually from the efficiency, I think if you just considering efficiency, yes, HV high voltage may have, of course, have a higher uh, efficiency than low voltage systems because they have less uh you have a smaller current we know if the current is big then loss would also be with would also be big uh, attendance uh, say i need a configuration a 360 kilowatt battery bank with 200 kilowatt inverter in general which product battery inverter would you recommend me for such solution so if we have a uh, uh, 360 kilowatt hour, we would recommend our M series batteries. I'm sorry that I didn't show you the details for this high voltage system products in preparation. So basically, like you have, you can have like three racks of the battery mo batteries and plus 200 kilowatts. We may recommend the Cinex C or PCS. They can have like 250, uh, power rating for the PCS side. So it's just like PCS plus batteries. So if you are interested, uh, we are also uh, providing our email here so you can send us email you know just in to share us some information or background for the project we can give you a technical proposal later uh, later this presentation okay okay thank you pat uh now it's two o'clock thanks for everyone thank you for your time to attending this session
hopefully you get a, a, some some information what you want to expect it. Okay. Um, thank you. See you next time. Thank you, guys. Thank you for coming. See you.